is Suki, the brown eyed stitcher, and I am here for floss tube number 12. I didn't look. <laughs> That's so bad. <sighs> Maybe I should just say another update. Let's talk about stitching. So, Today we're going to cover um, what I've been working on in Stitch Mania, what I'm going to work on until my next video, things I've acquired, and a giveaway winner. Let's not forget that. So, um, okay, you know what? Let's start with the giveaway winner so I don't forget that we did that thing. I had so much fun reading every single comment and looking up every single chart that was mentioned here, like every single one. <laughs> and there was, there was a lot, y'all, there was a lot, um, some of them I already was familiar with, and some of them were, um, there were some designers I was unfamiliar with, um, like didn't know existed, <laughs> um, or artists with Heaven and Earth designs that I've not seen their artwork. So it was so much fun for me to read everybody's comments and to talk with you guys and to look up all the charts and um yeah yeah I couldn't even cover all the charts here like there were so many of them so I'm not going to but what I will do is tell you that um this morning I chose the giveaway winner with a random comment but I totally didn't like film it or take a screenshot or anything because I didn't. <laughs> I just didn't. It has been. It, it just has been a weekend and a week already. I've learned that my tolerance for um, upheaval in my life is not very high. Like, it can feel overwhelming and then it takes me a bit just to get my feet under me again and even if it's me who's doing the upheaval so I yeah <laughs> and it was a house project this last weekend that extended into this week and is still not finished and it means my closet contents are all over my bedroom which is like the cleanest place in my house. My bedroom is like the place I'm able to very much maintain. Um, so it's driving me crazy that it's not, it's not, um, it's not like that. But my closet's moving forward and it's like I can, I'm now working through all the categories in my closet and decluttering and like putting things away. So that's good. Anyway, that is why I didn't capture the moment of choosing the giveaway winner, but I can tell you who it is. It is Case from, well, Case who is Jeep Girl Stitches Hold on, stitches and switches, right? Because stitching and, and horses, right? Um, Jeep girl, Case. She, she won the giveaway and the whip of hers that she thought I would most like is called The Reef. It's by John Enright, I think. It's um, all of this aquatic sea life, um, beautiful colors in there, like the ocean colors on there are, are gorgeous. You know, 
it's John Enright, so if you've seen others of his, you kind of know what his what his kind of vibe is there. So she is stitching that one, and that's the one that she put in her comment. So, case, congratulations, yay! I will get in contact with you, and if I haven't done so by the time you see this, you get in contact with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we will, uh, I'll need your email address, or, yeah, your email address so I can see your wish list on the Heaven and Earth design chart, so I can pick your chart out and send it to you. I'm so excited! Okay, um, yeah, I'm so excited about that. Now let's talk about what I've been stitching for Stitch Mania. It's kind of crazy that we're almost done with May already. Like, yeah, it just seems kind of crazy that that's the case. So, yes, this is the one. Um, I didn't really cover the first part of Mania because I did my whip parade, but the ones that I had stitched in the first part of Mania were shown in that whip parade. Um, but I have my board here. Okay, it's actually out of order. I ended up having to switch these two days because I ended up out of town on this day and I didn't want to take my shadow lane, so I took Calendar Girls instead and switched them. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So. I had stitched up to this point at my last video, so now I'm going to show you after that point. Starting with Neustranstein Castle, artwork by Robert Finale. I got this off Etsy. Um, the information is going to be in, in the description box for all of these projects. Um, this one, you have to DM the Etsy shop owner for the pattern. It's unlisted currently. Okay. What am I? Here we go. For some reason, it feels really foreign to be pulling stuff out of these bags. Okay, this is on um, 25 Count Lugana. It is 2 over 1 tent stitch. Um, yep, yep, that's it. And that's where I'm at. I put in 397 stitches on its Stitch Mania Day, so it is now at 1.45%. Now, I will say, there is a color in here, which, you know, it's purple, um, that... The chart calls for, that is a discontinued number, and when you look on the internet to see which, like, a uh, closest candidate, like a conversion, I don't know what words I'm trying to say here, like the recommended replacement color for that, you know what I mean. There's two of them out there, and I had grabbed the first one because I didn't realize there was two of them. Um, so I grabbed the first one and started stitching it in and started freaking out because it was so dark compared to everything else around here, and it is part of the purpley sky. You might be able to see kind of the purple that's there. So it wasn't part of the branches, it was part of this, this sky part, and it was all of a sudden this super dark color. And so I stopped pretty quickly. I messaged Ashley, um, who is um, Boogie Stitcher on Instagram. And no, Boogie Stitcher on FlossTube and Schleesum underscore Boogie, Boogie Stitcher on Instagram. There we go. Um, she makes FlossTube videos too, but she, right now she's taking a break to handle... Uh, pregnancy, which is very exciting. Anyway, I messaged her, kind of freaking out about this color change, and asked what color she went with, and 
And while I was like waiting for her reply, I like kept doing some searching and found a second color um, that was recommended to replace the discontinued one. Anyway, which ended up, that second one ended up being the one that Ashley also used because she, she had the original discontinued number and could color match it between the two choices and found that the second one that I found was more correct. So I frogged out what I had stitched and put in the new color. So anyway, if any of you are taking this on and you come across that discontinued number, I didn't, it's right, it's in my pattern keeper what color I used, but if you want to know and you see two different colors out there on the internet, it's the lighter color one, not the darker one. Trust me, it looks way better. All right, the next day I worked on my Mystery Town Stitch Along. This is from Ships Manor. It was a stitch along in 2017, and it's on a 16 count dyed Ada. And I finished the technically third part. That's what it's looking like. Doesn't it look so good? Okay, so I did this house right here up, up at the top. And I liked the color, so I just left them as is. I didn't change anything. I really liked them. And then it was also this one down here which I also didn't change the color. So those are both as charted. And that's what my town is looking like. So what I have left to do on this one is this building is part four. There's a building here that's part five. And then there's one up here that's part six. So Essentially three, I did these two buildings in one day. Um, I think this barn I did in two days and I can't remember. The cafe might have taken me two days, but it might also only have taken me one. So really, this feasibly could take me three more days of stitching. And then I would have a finish. But one... Some of these houses are kind of big, so maybe more like a week's worth, you know, be reasonable a week's worth. So long time to stitch, of course. It will have its time. It will. I will get them finished. I have a plan. The next one I worked on was October from the Calendar Girl series. And these are all on 28 count linen. Um, it's a Witchelt linen and it's in Country French Latte. And I feel like I got pretty far on this one. That It feels like a really good amount to me. Yeah. That's actually quite exciting to see all of that done. This might be my furthest one along, which means this might be the first one I finish. More on that later. Then I worked on Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. Um, yeah, this is on a 32 count Belfast linen in black. And I'm stitching this one over two with um, the crosses, the bands with the crosses, that's in DMC. The specialty stitches are in the uh, Verisois. And I finished the second band, all of those specialty stitches. Finished. I had this 
thought. I feel like specialty stitches feels intimidating because that as cross stitchers, that's not normally what we do. We do X's. So those are no longer a specialty because it's very common for us. We don't even call French knots specialty stitches because we see them a lot in, in patterns. In, but I have this to say, having now done a whole three different kinds of specialty stitches there, because I'm an expert now, uh, I, feel, I feel like a crazy person saying these things. I'm not an expert. Uh, but it occurred to me, these three stitches right here, they were easier than French knots. My personal opinion <laughs> is the trickiest thing about them was starting them in the right spot. But there's no knot tying. Like a French knot is a knot that you have to get like, right up by your hole and they can go wonky like especially if you're doing them as eyes and then you're like and we're cross-eyed or like bug-eyed or anyway so if specialty stitches scare you or if you have a dislike of french knots and so you're basing like a hesitation on specialty stitches off of your experience with french knots um like throw that out the window and know that Specialty stitches in this, at least so far, are way easier and more fun to stitch than French knots. <sighs> so next time I pull that out, it's going to be on to band three, which is another set of um, cross stitching, and I think it's butterflies. On, I don't know what, did, this was on a Sunday, so I stitched this on a Sunday. It's um, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen by Lindy Stitches, and I super love it. <laughs> oh man, like, it just cracks me up. They're all sleeping in their beds. So this I got... What is this? 32 count Lugana in green. Oops. Like. Okay, look, I'm just gonna have to let go. I did the top border. Well, not even the whole thing, but I did all of the green in the top border. And it looks really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I feel like. One thing I've definitely learned with Stitch Mania is one day is not long enough for me on a project. Because one day has me like constantly reorienting myself to the pattern to where I'm working on it and 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 then some time to settle into it, but then I want to keep going. So, one day is not long enough. That's one thing I've learned with Stitch Mania. Um, I guess I would have worked on this on a Monday. Um, Peaceful Garden Path by um, Sunset. In, I saw the date somewhere, 1991. This one, I, I decided I needed to do some back stitching. So I did. And you can really, so I know there is some back stitching over here already, but you can see how little back stitching it looks there versus this side that is finished. It looks so good. Um. There are, like, the red has backstitching around it, and then there's 
green around the leaves and the vining. And then this is blue to go around in that border. It really does look so good. I love it. And I don't mind backstitching. I kind of like it. Next, I worked on my Temperature Library. This is Temperature Library number two from Christie's Corner Needlework on Etsy. And <laughs> I keep debating whether or not I'm just going to stitch the little chapter keys as it is or get the pack. And so I basically am just going to wait until the very, very end to decide this. So this is on an 18 count oatmeal Ada. And I did border. That's it. This came on a day in which I really needed something easy and low key. So it was perfect and a very easy choice to do just order. So, you know, it's like nearing the end of May. I should definitely have this bookshelf filled up until about here. Clearly, I don't. Okay, I'll just bring the rest of these up here. Whew. Next, I worked on June, the Calendar Girls series from Little House Needlework. And I love the bouquet she's wearing. Not that I'm anywhere near that. But that's what I did. Yep. So exciting. Oh, that's 28 count linen in country French latte. This is July from the Calendar Girls series from Little House Needleworks. You'll probably never guess, but this is on 28 count linen in country French latte. And that's what it looks like. And I think this is the one where I realized that this brown vine, like the actual brown part of it, is exactly the same in every single Calendar Girls. You can see her cream right there. <sighs> yep, that brown vine. It's stitched in 434 on every single chart in the Calendar Girl series. Okay. You know, since it's been two weeks since I filmed, that means that there's 14 projects to be showing you guys. Bubble Bubble Chocolate Trouble by Randall Spangler. Um, Charted by Heaven and Earth Design. <laughs> They're so cute. This is on um, 25 count, easy count. Stitched two over one. Um, ten stitch. And I stitched a blue color, which I bet you probably wouldn't have guessed. No. And it was, it's all up here. All, like, not all of this blue, but there's a blue that I stitched all the way throughout up there. I put in 458 stitches on this one. And that brings it to 2.98%. I wish I could make that one a focus, but it can't be a focus for a while, so it's not. This one, oh, this one, okay. Um, this is Snuggle Up Nomies. It is by Kaylee Cruff. Is that how you say your last name? I don't have any idea. I've never heard it pronounced, and I. that's what it looks like, or will look like. Snuggle up, Nomies. It's cold outside, and he's so cute. Isn't he so cute? Okay, 
So you know that this one had a debate. Well, I guess if you're new around here, you don't know that. This one had a debate on the fabric choice or if I was going to do a color conversion and like the color conversion, like I knew I just didn't want to stitch it directly on white. Like that was kind of what I knew for certain. So I was thinking of doing a color conversion, but then I realized that that will be kind of complicated more than I wanted to do. And I do like it as charted. And that's where like thinking of fabrics came up. So this is what I ended up with. Isn't this so pretty? I'm gonna open it and show it to you, but um, but before I do that, I wanna show you just the fabric. So I am really quite happy about this. This started out as a color called Evening Rose. Yes, Evening Rose. And if you watched my um, Stitch Mania video, I think it was my Stitch Mania video anyway. Two, so two videos ago, I think I think I showed two different fabrics, like a pink fabric and a blue fabric. And this is the pink fabric, but obviously not the same. So I I dyed it. It's my second fabric dye, and I love it so much. Um, I dyed it, uh, well it probably wouldn't help to tell you how I dyed it because I don't have a color for whatever this is now, but I will tell you it's perfect for Nomi's. This is 32 count Belfast linen, and yeah, I added, I put in, look at that, doesn't that look so good on this fabric? I love it. And yes, this is much larger than the whole thing's going to be. So, I started up here. My daughter super loves the puff ball at the end of the hat. This color right here, I think it's 820, um, has in the whole chart 2,222 stitches. Like, Kaylee, did you do that on purpose? Like... Two, 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 uh, maybe. <laughs> I just thought that was fun to see. Anyway, so I put in 723 stitches, 28 stitches. So it is 6.67% finished now. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. Yeah. There's, um... Almost 1,100 stitches in this whole thing. There's that. All right. November. Little House Needleworks. I will have to say that starting 10... Of the same like 10 parts of the same series within one month not my smartest idea but by the end of this month they will all be started <laughs> so I can work through them all this is how far I got and guys I already think that the letters on these charts are like really fiddly on this fabric because you can't carry your threads it's too um, loose you can see it's it's a really really big holes uh, a loose weave on this one so not only are the letters fiddly but November is three different colors like I don't even have the third one in so you can only see two of them up here and I, it's the only one here's the picture so you can see it's it's a green color in the middle Maybe there. And just like all the other ones, it's a 28 count linen by Witchelt in country French latte. And one more, one more for today. 
August. Uh, this is my little creepy girl. <laughs> um, if I had had more time that day, I would have gotten her eyes in, like finished her face up so she wasn't weird like this, but no. Like, these big splotches that look like her eyes right now, those are actually her cheeks. Her eyes are in the middle there. So, there's been some fun comments on my Instagram about that one. So, oh, that was yesterday. Which was Monday. Today is Tuesday, but you won't see this until Thursday. Um... And then, uh, well, let me tell you real quick the rest of my Stitch Mania plans, and then I'll show you my Treasure Hunt bookshelf. But I just want to kind of finish out the Stitch Mania thoughts in my head. Um, or maybe I shouldn't. No, I'm going to. Um, so I didn't want to pull them all out, so I, that, I brought my board. So this was Monday. So this is today, um, Tuesday. My my today will be Father Christmas with toys. And I'm super sorry for, I'll try to avoid glare. This is March from Calendar Girls. Mayari, Deity of the Moon. She's a Bella Filipina. This is April... Frodo and Galadriel, May, and she is the very last calendar girl to start. <laughs> That'll be exciting. Um, Victorian Christmas Bell Pull. This is a Jan Lynn kit. And Canopy Hearts, um, which I'll talk about more in, in a bit. But that will be my very last mania. The end of May. May 31st. Yay! Okay. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. My masterpiece. Artwork by Amy Stewart. Charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is the super size max color version. <sighs> and my pride and joy. All right. So I added 7,204 stitches on this in the last two weeks. So now we're at 292,000 stitches. It's crazy. I'm at 40.46%. 40%. And that's what we're looking like now. All right. So, um... This is the end of the section. There were some colors here that I didn't, the day I was stitching them, I didn't feel like ending the threads off, so I stitched them up here. Um, so this is the next section, and this is the section after that. There's a purple flower here that I didn't even know was there until I was stitching it, and so that was cool. <laughs> the This is the village, and it is complete now because right here, is my horse that I really want it to be a unicorn, but I don't think it is. Here, I'm going to stand up for a second. Um, in here, I don't know if you can see it real well on the camera, but there is like blue colors in here to start the shading of the horse. So you can see like where its belly is and its leg. His tail is totally finished. And yes, apparently this horse is a he. Um... I don't know why. The fox is also a he. That, yeah. Um, and this greenery, there's a lot of it. Like over here, there's just like, it's small, but it just keeps going up. There's a lot of this green stuff all throughout the bottom of here. So, there we are. Maybe because all the characters are girls, and so I think of the animals as boys. The hummingbird is just a hummingbird. I don't... It's an it. Yeah. 
I love it. So, um, I just sat on my little note card. So that's what I've worked on in the last two weeks. So, upcoming plans. Um, okay, so I'm going to finish out Mania, which I just showed you. Um, and let me talk about Canopy Hearts now. So, um, somebody joined Alara and I to start Canopy Hearts on May 31st, which I think is so fun. Um, yeah. La La Lara Conrad, I think. Um, I'll get her Instagram name up. Yeah. She's joining us for May 31st for Canopy Hearts. And I got my fabric. If you remember, I um, gifted Alara this chart and she gifted me the fabric for it. And she, like, prepped it and everything. She, she told me where my three inch border was. She has like the name and everything up here. And this made me laugh. If you come down here, she says 10 colors, LOL. <laughs> There's only 10 colors in this. I'm so excited about this chart. Um, on my Stitch Mania day, I will probably only stitch black, but we'll see. Um, this is, this is the whole fabric. This is 28 count. So, I'm really, really excited about this. I'm going to use the hashtag canopy heart. Singular. Canopy heart. I did look it up. There are like two pictures out there of beautiful canopy hearts. Um, so, I'm about to take it over with some cross stitch. So, feel free to join. Me and Alara and Lara. Lara, I'm assuming it's Lara because it's L-A-R-A. -A. And I have a niece who with that name, and it's Lara. So tell me if I'm wrong in that and how to say it correctly, and I might remember. Okay. After Mania... I've been thinking a whole lot about what I want to do moving forward uh, because my thoughts have been so much on mania for the last like five months uh, that thinking beyond that I hadn't started yet but now I have been and so a couple things I've learned through mania one is that one day for one project is not long enough it's been really fun but I do not want to do it every single day. Like, I do not want to switch projects that often. Um, and I already know from previous experience that, like, a full week on one project is too long for me. So kind of my magic numbers are, like, three to four days on a project feels really good for me. I also... Um, I love all my projects. I think we all say that, uh, which just means that I want to stitch on them all. And, and when you have a lot of whips, you can't do that. So then you have to start deciding, like, do I want to work on, like, all of these different things, no matter how long it takes me, or do I want to, um, like see more progress on a few things, um, and be able to, yeah, just, you know what I mean? Like, you have to start deciding which, which values are more important to you, and it's totally fine whichever way you go, you just have to start choosing. So what I chose is to have a smaller number of projects as, like, my focus pieces, and I've talked about this before having like these focus pieces, but it was still kind of like, I didn't know what I was gonna do with the rest of my projects otherwise. 
Um, I think they're just going to be like my projects. I don't, I'm not gonna, they're not necessarily just starts. Some of them are just starts, but I'm just gonna have a projects and some of them are going to be active and the majority of them aren't. And um, I'm totally fine with starting new things too and then putting them into this big old batch of, of projects that I have, but really focusing on these like smaller amounts of projects so that I can see them finished because I just, I love them so much. And some of these, like my oldest whip is 2016. Um, I just want to see more of them finished. So with that said, I'll show you what I will work on after Mania, but before my next video. So I'm, I think I'm going to kind of have like a rotation. I don't really want to, I haven't really fleshed the whole thing out yet. Um, and I'm going to kind of use June to kind of feel out what I want to do here and if I like it. But um, under the C is my oldest non-full coverage piece. So this is going to be a, a focus to get it finished. And I'm, I'm working on the mermaid right now. Like this top row and over here is finished, so I'm working on that section um, right now. So I'm going to work on that. It's going to be like, basically I have like Monday through Thursday as one project, and then like my weekend, which is Friday through, through Sunday, is another project. And um, I think I'm going to have four weeks. Each of them are kind of different. They kind of have same, similar themes, but um, kind of different. Like I said, I'm still kind of feeling this out. Anyway, so Under the Sea is going to get June 1st and 2nd, which is a Wednesday and Thursday. And then on the weekend, Friday through Sunday, I will work on Queen of the Night because this is... Um, uh, this is something I'm gifting to a friend, a very dear friend. And so it kind of has a deadline <laughs> and I want to get that done. Um, I'll show you where it's at. I'm working, I have two pages finished on this piece and I'm working on a third page. Oops, I'm dropping stuff. And I think I'm going to work on this every other weekend. So in, in a four week rotation, this one is the only piece that will get like a repeat within that. No, well, that may not be true. I'm very confusing right now. I didn't actually think through how I was going to explain this. Um, 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 um. A tablet on my lap and it keeps trying to slide off when I lean forward. Okay, then um, the next Monday through Thursday, so the 6th to the 9th, I have a new start. This is Sabrina. She is um, a Mirabilia. And I am stitching this with Catherine, the Needleberry Stitcher. We are starting on November 6th. She is going to be stitching Sabrina with all the beads. And I am going to substitute the beads for DMC so we can do a comparison between the two and show everybody um, that, like, just what the difference is so that if... If you don't like beading, but you like Mirabilia's, you know what that difference looks like. Um, yeah. So this is getting stitched on, on this fabric. It's a 28 count linen um, called Sprite. It is not going to show up very well. 
I don't know if I can get it to. It's kind of like a purpley pinky color. Mostly purple, not really pink. I don't know why I keep thinking it's pink, but um, if I didn't say it, it's bright. Picture this plus. She's gonna be beautiful on this fabric. And I'm very excited for this. So she's going to get four days. And then you'll have another video from me and I can like cover what the rest of it is. But here's my thinking as of right now, is under the sea, we'll get four days every like four weeks until it's finished. And then I will substitute it or switch it, put in another piece to, until it's finished, okay? So that one will probably be kind of like my oldest non-full coverage. Um, my Monday through Thursday slots are non-full coverage pieces and my weekend slots are full coverage pieces. So that's kind of this division, excuse me. And that just kind of has to do with um, like where I am when, I, when I'm stitching and what's going on that it's a division that really works for me. So under the sea, we'll get its four days and then queen of the night. And then Sabrina will get four days. And then, um, and then I'm gonna work through my full coverage pieces meeting my yearly goal on them. So the first one I'm going to do is Frodo and Galadriel, which is um, the one chosen by y'all as a favorite. So I'm going to work on that until I reach its goal and then I will pick a different full coverage piece to meet its yearly goal on. Then, and then I'm going to work on the Summer Garden by Drawn Thread for Monday through Thursday. I picked that one um, just because I love it and um, I would really like to see that one finished. I don't know. I, it's just it's just one that I'd like to see finish sooner. And I anyway, because I do love all of them and I want to see them all finished. So that's like a really lame excuse to use for or reason why to pick it over another one. Um, I was just really drawn to that one every time I I I can't say that either because that's just about every. You know what? I just picked it. OK, the summer thread or summer garden. I just picked it. Then I'll work on Queen of the Night again. And then I'm going to work on Mayari. So another fancy lady. Um, I'm going to work on Mayari. And then back to um, whichever full coverage I'm trying to meet the yearly goal. So it may be Frodo and Galadriel or, I don't know, just another one that whatever happens to be next. I don't know at this point what that's going to be. And... That's kind of as far as I've gotten right there. That's four weeks. The only other thing that I have is my canopy hearts. I'm going to work on canopy hearts on the last day of every month. So, you know, May 31st, June, it'll be the 30th. Okay, so, um, and I'll, I don't know yet if I'm going to try to work three projects in that day, like my bookshelf and then whatever that the focuses right then and canopy hearts or if it's going to be if I'm going to substitute canopy hearts for the focus I don't know what I don't know I hope that was not like totally messy of an explanation but it could have been and if it was the next video I'll explain better like visual aids uh because visual aids always help, right? Okay, I <laughs> don't even know how long this video is at this point. Uh, but we, if, if you have watched any other of my videos, you already know that we just chat. We're just friends, okay? 
we're just friends. Uh, the last thing I have to cover is things I have acquired. And, um, so yeah, we're gonna, I'm excited for all of it. Um, from like three different sources. So, uh, first, what's top of this pile? Here we go. Um, I live very close to um, Hobby Lobby, and my daughter really likes going there, and so do I. And um, we don't go every week. Okay, we probably go at least once a week. Because it's literally like five minutes away. Anyway, we found ourselves in the clearance section. Which is in an area of the store uh, that we don't often go to. I mean, because it's like in the back corner. Anyway, we found ourselves in the clearance section. Um, and so I have stuff I just couldn't leave in the clearance section. So the first one is, um, it's called Forest Friends, 12 Adorable Animals to Embroider by Hand. It's by Leisure Arts. Yes, Leisure Arts. And it looks like Cheyenne... Valencia is the artist. Did I just put that upside down for you? There you go. That's right side up. And it looks like this. And they're so cute. Um, aren't they so cute? I can't, um, I don't know if I can. I don't have a favorite even. Um, where's the, they have a skunk, a squirrel. Oh, look at this one. Here's the wolf. It's howling. I am really excited about this. Yep, they're cute. I like the hedgehog. Right or porcupine. I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking it's a porcupine. A bear, beaver, oh is it a beaver? Oh no, porcupine. Bear, beaver, deer, fox, hummingbird, owl, porcupine, rabbit, raccoon, skunk, squirrel, and wolf. Yep, porcupine. So cute. Um, there you go there. And then I saw um, this kit from, I don't know how you say it, Thea Governor? Thea Governor? I don't know. This one. And this is Emperor Moth. And everything, I haven't actually opened it yet, but it's still got fabric in it. And it, it this one's on Ada. This kit came with Ada. I don't know that I will stay doing it on Ada or if I will, um, cause I, I really like not Ada. Um, so I might switch it out for something else, but, but I got it. And for a month and I've never done a kit from them before or any pattern of theirs before. And I really have wanted to. Uh, but, um, some of them are very, very large. So, this is, seems like a really good one to get started with. I feel like it's still probably pretty large. Eight, an eight by eight inch thing. 8.3 by 8.3. That's what it says. Okay. And then I got... A whole bunch of 32 Murano, which I've never used before. 32 count Murano. And this one is like a bait. I don't know if they have names on them. 
floor. Fleur. This one just says fleur. So it's like a brown with a flower. And if you have any pattern that you think would look good on this, please tell me. Because I might be interested. There's actually two of them. And I got both. I got, I literally picked up every single one of them. Each of these are like a 11 by 18 inch. Um, for $1.50. So yes, please. This is taupe. Yes, I literally grabbed all of it that was there. This is gray. I really love this one. Oh, and there's two of them. Because I couldn't leave them behind. And then, oh, and all of those, I need pattern suggestions for what is going to look good on them. So hit me up. This one, I feel like I need to take out because it's kind of hard to see. It's, it's um, called Pink Splash. And it's basically white, but with those little pink dots. It's so cute. And I'll show you the size. It's not very big. Just 11 by 18, but look at that. It's so hard to see this one. It's not hard in person, but it is hard on the camera to show the, the little precious little pink dots. I just couldn't, I don't know what I'm going to stitch on them or when, but for $1.49, I was not going to pass it up. So that was my Hobby Lobby clearance score, and unfortunately I had been avoiding the clearance section, so I wouldn't be like, I mean, I wasn't consciously avoiding it, but once I found it, I was like, oh yeah. It was probably not a good idea for me to find this, but we just happened upon it. And now I'm going to want to, like, that's going to be a regular stop. Like, my daughter and I, we go in and we go to the, the floss section and we go to the, like, pens, like the arts pens section, the paper crafting, like washi tape and stickers section. And, and now we're going to have the clearance section and the yarn section. We go there too. The clearance section is like near the fabric and we were there looking at fabric for my daughter to make pillowcases. All right, the next thing I added was um, in a conversation with Stephanie from So Glover Creations. Uh, she was talking, well, we had been talking about uh, whips, like how many, pro like how we think about projects and how um, like many feels like too many for us and how we think about them can shift how many projects is too much or too little. Anyway, in that conversation, she, she said that she had a whip that she was thinking of selling. And I said, pick me, because I already have the pattern for it. And so she sold me the her floss and fabric for, oh, I should have pulled this up. I can do it, because it's on my pattern keeper. Um, one moment. It's not on my pattern keeper. Um, I'm going to have to go to my cloud storage. But this is what it looks like. Can you guess? Obviously, these are not my normal colors to stitch an entire chart in. But I'm going to do it. And you're going to think I'm crazy when you... um. Here are my, what I'm 
going to do. Okay, would you stop showing me all that stuff? Just let me do what I'm doing. It's thinking. All right. You cannot get this chart anymore. Oh, goodness. There's no way for me to not get the glare of my ring light. Unless I... Here. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, this is Middle Earth. The Realm of Middle Earth by Tilt and Craft. This was um, a limited edition. Um, Heaven and Earth Designs also used to have a chart. And it's also unavailable. So, sorry. I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody has the rights for it right now to have it into a cross-stitch pattern. I don't know. But... I've got it. I've had the pattern now for a while. And now I have the flosses for it. And these are all the ones that she bobbined already. Um, okay, I haven't even pulled this out yet. There's a comparison I want to do here, but it's, I don't, um, maybe I can do it still. <clears throat> Her start is still on here, but I'm going to frog it out. <laughs> this is how big the chart is, because, yeah, this big. And this is, I think it's a 28 count. 25 count. This is 25 count. And it's big. Okay, so. Okay, so here. We're going to do this comparison. Because, um, because you know, I've got Frodo and Galadriel, right? I have others of Matt Stewart that I want to do, like, in my head. I have this vision of, like, a Lord of the Rings wall. I don't know where this wall exists um, or can exist, but it exists in my head, and that's all that matters, right? Um, and... <laughs> But look at the size of this. Look at that. It like goes on and on, on a 25 count. This is also 25 count, this one. And it is already plenty big. So just for comparison, just in case, we just need to fathom how big this is together. My, my chair rocks, so this is kind of weird. All right. It extends out this far. But, like, see how much bigger it is? And I don't know that I need or want the map to be that big when I have, like, Several of these charts that I want on my Lord of the Rings wall. Um, you know, the non-existent one, because I don't even have one finished. Because this is as far as I am towards this Lord of the Rings wall. So, I have this super, super crazy idea of, instead of doing it on 25 count, of doing it on um, 40 count. I've never stitched on 40 count before, and I'm going to be testing this out on another piece. Um, the fabric arrives for that other piece today. It's not here yet, so I can't show it to you. Um, obviously, I can't. 
that'll give me a good idea of whether it's super insane of me to try to stitch this Lord of the Rings map on 40 count. We'll see. But it'll make it like a size that I think would work better for this, you know, decade from now Lord of the Rings wall that I'm definitely going to be having. Does anybody else do crazy ideas like that? Like, please say yes. And please tell me what they are so that we can be a little bit crazy together. So, <laughs> I did not expect to be this chatty today, but I am. I have one more thing to show you. And I just realized I didn't ask permission to show this to you guys. So I'm going to do it anyway. And, um, like, love you, Alara. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Alara, if you are following her, you already know this, but if you aren't following her, you won't know this, but she has started to make project bags and I have one here in my hands and I want to show it off um, for two reasons. One, because I am super proud of her for like doing this. Uh, she is like a legit business and everything now. And I am so proud of people, anybody who, who like goes after in, with an entrepreneurial spirit, like just goes for it. I am so happy for her. I'm proud of her. And, um, yeah. So she's making project bags and, um, None of them are up for sale yet, but if you follow Alara Designs, Alara Designs on Instagram, uh, she's got an account there. Um, you can also follow Alara directly, but that is her like uh, business side of it. I'm like still sitting on my chair in this awkward way. There you go. So I want to show you um, the second reason. The second reason why I'm really excited to show you these bags is because, um, well, I don't actually own any project bags outside of these Amazon ones. Like, this is what I have. Uh, because there's so many options out there that it's um, like decision overwhelm for me and I, 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 I definitely have, have that. I, I just can't choose. There's so many options and they all look good and then I can't decide on like who I'm going to try or what, what, what's even I'm going to like. Anyway, so I have this in my hands and um, she has some different ideas that she's put together that I really like. I think that's pretty neat. And I wanted to show them off to you just in case you are not following her already. And, and this makes you want to go and, and support her and her backs. So this is uh, what it looks like. And I'll tell you my, I'll tell you some of the features, but maybe not all of the features because I might forget about some of them. <laughs> and I'll show you some of my favorite parts. So it's, it's vinyl fronted, but it's um, double vinyl fronted. So there's actually, this is vinyl right here, and then there's one right here that is also vinyl. And then you've got your main pocket. So the, the good thing about having this vinyl pocket is you can take your chart 
And if you can see, like, mine is getting bent from, like, the fabric being in there. Now it can go in this double vinyl pocket. And it's not going to get, like, smushed because everything else is going to be in this part of the pocket. Like, your fabric, your threads, like, I don't know, scissors, or containers, like, whatever can fit in here and be separate. Now it is vinyl, so um, sometimes the, when, when you have something printed like this against vinyl for like a really long time, you know that there can be ink transfer. So you have two options. She is sending a page protector with your chart or with your bag. She'll, she'll include a page protector so that it doesn't mess up your vinyl so that you can still put this in here or you can just laminate if you have a laminator you could go ahead and and laminate your chart and pop it in either way that's what that looks like she put in a snap so that you can keep the double vinyl closed and look at that snap it's a turtle snap and it's so cute. It's, I love it. It's one of my favorite parts about this whole bag is this vinyl, I mean the turtle snap. Because it's just like, it's, it's in the details, you guys. It's so fun. Now she gave me a purple zipper because my hair is purple. I assume that's why she did it. Come on now. Um, it is a zipper right here. Ooh, ass. <laughs> and uh, let me... So you know how big this is Frodo and Galadriel. I'm... I'm just going to do a very quick roll and put this in so you can kind of see like the... I don't know what size this is. I think this is a medium. She's making different size bags, and I don't, I don't know what size this is. I could have asked her, but since I already forgot to ask her if I could show off this bag, and I'm doing it anyway. Okay, there's the fabric. It's like less than half of the bag space. <laughs> like, it's still so thin. Um... Okay, here is, this is the big old one. Um, that I was just showing you. I would not ever roll it that messily, but I'm going to today to show you that in here as well. Sometimes I feel like it can be hard to get the, the idea of what size project bags are. Like when other people show, show them. Anyway, now you know, you know how big those fabrics are and this is how easily that they fit. Um, so putting in, like if I had Frodo and Galadriel fully, fully kitted up with its own threads and everything, I could absolutely keep all the threads in here along with its fabric. I, I, I have no doubt about that. The other thing she has on here are these grommets. Because she's got a strap. These ones aren't adjustable, but I know that she's going to be making the straps adjustable. And um, it looks a little crazy, so let's ignore those right now. So these carabiners, you uh, can attach to the grommets. And then if you have multiple bags of the same size, you can use the same carabiners. But if you have bags of hers that are different sizes, you can get these, like, extenders, like an additional snap thingy and strap strap with carabiners 
and and hook them on. So let's just hook this on. And now it's very easy. You can just pop it on and um, I don't really want to stand up again. I'm going, I'll do it anyway. I can't, I can't even do it because I'm on my chair. Um, but now you can just carry your project, like, you don't have to try to make room for it in your purse or bag. It can have its own separate bag, but it can still be hands-free with these straps. So I am, I'm super loving it. Uh, what else? Oh, I haven't shown you the back yet. She basically has the best fabric, and she's got more that I'm really looking forward to acquiring in bags. But this one is a Josephine wall, like, panel. So sometimes, depending on her fabric that she's using for the back of it, will dictate the size of it. So, like, this is a Josephine wall, as you can see, and she is so pretty. And one thing I really love is that the back is quilted, but you can't see it. Well, in the camera, you won't really be able to see it. In person, you can. But she's kind of free-formed around, like the girl is like, here's, here's your quilting around the girl. And then, like, in the wings, there's some free-motion quilting. And around the butterflies... So there's no quilting lines that distracts from the beautiful fabric. She's, she works with the fabric. And um, and I love it. So this is actually not the project that's going to go in here, but it just happened to be the one that I'm demonstrating with. So Alara Designs, check her out. Alara, you didn't ask me to tell anybody, and I didn't ask you if I could tell anybody, but I'm doing it. And I love it. So, that finishes everything that I have to show you. Whew. Um, yes. Giveaways, mania, all the things, be covered, everything. Big mess, everywhere. So, I hope that your May is going great. And if it's not, um, leave me a comment. Like, we can hug it out in the comments, okay? Or DM me on Instagram. Uh, yeah, you know that I always tell you that hard things happen and it's totally okay. Like, it's okay to have those hard things happen and you don't have to go through it alone. And I hope that you're not going through it alone. But if you are, um, be my friend. Like, I can send you hug emojis, like, all day long, okay? Well, maybe not all day long, but, like, regularly... I can do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's all. I apparently can chat the whole time, but not really know how to say goodbye to you guys. So until next time, love to you all. Bye.